G'day guys, Shaka back from Cybertrigger here with another video today. So today we're going to be talking about timing, uh, gear ratios, motor combination with gears, um, talking about timing your piston and your sector gear, and also about timing your tapper plate. So first and foremost, uh, you might be thinking, I want to do a build, I want 35 rounds per second, I want it at 350 feet per second, what do I do? Uh, what do I buy? So Basically, you've got a few ways to achieve this. You've got things like 18 to 1 gears, which is your standard ratio of gear, which comes standard in gel blasters. Um, you then have 16 to 1, uh, which you don't have at the moment. They're on their way, which are a little bit quicker than 18 to 1s, but slightly less torquey. Then you've got 13 to 1s, which are considerably quicker than 18 to 1s. Um, but let's talk again and then you've got 12 to 1s which are your fastest SSG besides 10 to 1s but your typical sort of fastest ratio gear for gel blasters is your 12 to 1 gear ratio so let's just say we took out these gears and we put uh, a set of 12 to 1s in we will get an increased rate of fire in saying that we will put more stress on a stock motor so because the stock motors aren't designed to be sort of pushed to their limits we do then sort of have to upgrade the motor so when we're talking about you know I want 35 rounds per second at 350 feet per second um, we do have to look at uh, what motor we're going to run that's sufficient for enough torque uh, what gears we're going to run to be able to supply the torque to the gearbox to be able to pull a bigger spring back um, reliably over a long term um, and then we also have to be concerned about timing of your sector gear to your piston so let's say we paired 12 to 1s with say a 35k motor now depending on the resistance within the gun so the size of the spring that it's running the type of voltage battery it's running um, the C discharge on that voltage um, will depend on your rate of fire that you're going to achieve in the end safe safe bets generally 12 to 1 will run and on 35k will generally run you about 36 to 37 rounds per second depending on spring smaller spring it's going to hit more bigger spring it might hit slightly less um, a 20c discharge 11 volt will run slower like maybe 35 or 36 and uh, say a 35 or a 40c discharge battery will hit sort of that 37 38 rounds per second so there's a whole lot of different factors into what sort of numbers you should be achieving at the end um, but that's your typical sort of setup so 35 rounds 36 rounds per second on 12 to 1s um, you know you're looking at about 35 to 34 rounds per second on 13 to 1s more give or give or take depending on resistance like I said and on 18 to 1s you're looking at about 27 rounds per second so um, bear in mind that you know the gears do have different torque loads on them uh, but being a brushless motor the amount of torque that's in these things is insane so you don't have to worry about your torque loading when you're going to say 12s or 13 to 1s with a brushless motor so timing something I want to talk about is you know depending on how long your barrel is will depend on how much you can short stroke your sector gear for timing within the piston and the sector itself uh, as to the voluming within the barrel you've got so higher rates of fire builds generally favor under 30 centimeter long barrels uh, 30 centimeters and under is sort of a good medium to be able to short stroke some teeth off the sector and bring back some timing so you might be thinking what is short stroking so short stroking is taking a dremel and removing teeth off either the front or the release side of your sector gear so one thing you do need to be aware of is a standard ratio rate of fire um, this sector gear will spin X amount of times per second so let's just say you've set it up for 35 uh, let's just say standard speed 20 rounds per second this thing spins 20 times in one second so it'll do this that's one two three it'll do that 20 times in one second so if we just say increase the rate of fire to 35 rounds per second this gear will now spin 35 times in one second 
So the main problem after that is without short stroking, without taking any teeth off your sector, what's going to happen is this gear now spins too fast, depending on the spring, spins too fast for the piston to reset to where it needs to sit. So basically the problem then becomes if you're, let's say you've done a build and you're breaking pistons quite easily or regularly or you know, um, say you did, did about 10,000 shots, a few bags of gels and your piston's broken. Uh, what's happening is, is there's your pickup point there. It's spinning through and shooting, but because this gear is spinning so quick, the piston can't fully seat itself in its rested position to be picked up in time by the sector. So it ends up picking up the piston on these teeth. And depending on how bad your premature engagement is, so let's just say you have really bad premature engagement, it's spinning way faster than what the piston's resetting, because say you've got an M100 spring in it, you're doing 35 rounds per second, you'll break pistons very quickly just because you'll see some actual damage, not wear, like rubbing marks, but you'll see like gouges out of the teeth down here. Um, the pickup tooth is literally two to three times the size of any other tooth because that's where it's designed to be picked up for its cycle. So ideally we need this piston to rest fully before it gets picked up every single time it shoots to maintain the piston's integrity. And like I said before, the way around that is to short stroke your, let's just say we took three teeth off, off your sector gear we do need to remove some teeth. Now, some people move them off the front, some people move them off the back. Um, if I need to take two, I'll generally take one off the front, one off the back. Um, but pick up tooth on your sector gear is generally where people will short stroke from. Uh, just be careful with that, because taking too many teeth can affect the timing of your tappet plate with your feeding. Um, you know, so it is something to be aware of sort of moving forward. So the idea is that if we take say two or three teeth off our sector gear now it's going to release there so it releases here instead of all the way back here so it allows our piston to travel f forward quick reset quicker than before the sector can come and pick it up the downside to a long barrel setup is if we do that we're now taking the voluming of the cylinder x amount of air is needed in this cylinder to be pushed down at to suit X amount of barrel length. And it depends on the barrel length as to how much you can get away with short stroking. So let's just say it's a 30 centimeter barrel. I can easily take two teeth off this sector, bring it back down to here to your, you know, about an 80%, um, even though I would, you know, would generally take about three if it's a 30 centimeter long barrel. And then the piston will reset from here forward instead of coming all the way back. And it won't affect the voluming of the barrel on the gel blaster either. So we're effectively able to time it with short striking your sector to bring back the release on your piston to have it reset faster. Um, you know, and that's if you wanna use a smaller spring. The other way to, without short stroking it and without doing anything, is put a bigger spring in it. If you put an M120 or an M130 in it, you're gonna put a lot more stress on the internals. However, that piston will seat back quicker, a, a, a lot faster. However, you will now be running about 400 feet per second, which obviously is not field, field legal at most fields. Um, so you don't wanna do that. You wanna run, say, an M120, take two or three teeth off your sector gear, and that should drop you down to that 330 feet per second. Now, M120 or M100 stands for meters per second. So M100 means 100 meters per second, and if we translate that to feet per second, it's about 310 feet per second for an M100 spring. So an M120 should be hitting around that 370 feet per second mark. Um, but bear in mind that if we do take, say, three teeth off, you're losing about 10 feet per second per tooth because that spring is no longer being as compressed as it should be, uh, which means it's not pushing the, the piston back with as much intensity as it was before. So um, it is a bit of a recipe to hit certain rates of fire with certain spring sizes that you're chasing. Um, and it is something to be aware of. So obviously, you know, if we put say a 30, uh, 39K motor on 12 to ones, we're gonna be hitting around that 40 rounds per second. We have to be very wary of the barrel length, how long that barrel length is, because we're going to have to short stroke quite a few teeth off here, maybe four, 
maybe five, um, and then basically run, you know, an M120 or an M130 spring, and that should hit us around that sort of 330 feet per second mark, depending on the barrel length, as long as we're not under volumed. Voluming, I'll talk about in another video. This video is more about bringing back timing and talking about timing within a gearbox because it's extremely important for reliability and it's also important for your consistency in accuracy and FPS or a chrono too. So um, the second thing I want to talk about is uh, tap it timing. So the same thing happens here. We've got timing on the piston and then we've got timing on your actual tap it plate now. So basically with your tappet plate the way that it works is your gears come round your tappet plate gets pulled around by the sector your sector is now picking up your piston and it is now releasing the tappet plate and the pistons coming back and then it re releases the piston and fires the air so once this tappet plate is pulled back what the blast is doing the magazine's loading a gel up into your t-piece uh, once the sector gear lets go, the return spring pulls the tapper plate forward. Your nozzle's now rested up against your bucking. The bucking is holding the gel ball. The sector gear lets go of the piston, and boom, it shoots the air down your barrel, resulting in, in a fired shot. So let's just say you've put it to 35 rounds per second, you're on a tapper plate, and or even 33 rounds per second, you're on a tapper plate. And what's happening is, is in semi, you're shooting at about 300 or 320 feet per second, for example. But then you switch to full auto and you drop to about 270 feet per second. Now, that is a full auto compression droop is what I call it. So basically what's happening there is in semi, this is returning, piston shooting, air is fired, cycle is finished. In full auto, what's happening is, is this sector gear is spinning so fast that before this tappet plate can push the nozzle into the bucking it's being picked back up before it can be back in its rested position so there's a couple ways around this this one here you can see I've already trimmed the tail of the tappet so the first step would be trimming the tail on your tappet they normally come down to about here um, you can cut that down so basically just take some cutters and then just cut the end of your tappet plate off and that will vary depending on the rate of fire that you're actually running as to how quick it'll allow your nozzle to reseat. Be careful to not take too much off your tappet plate because if you do it'll basically before a gel can get up in front of the nozzle the nozzle's already returning to its its rested position meaning that now you're not you're going to have a feeding problem. So you want to find that sweet spot between them um, another way is if it's only just off is basically take a, re a return spring like this one um, and I like to just take my cutters and basically just take two or three coils um, bend them out like that and just sort of bend bend the coil out and then cut off cut off that excess and now I've got a really short return spring which means it's super strong and it will pull that tappet plate further back so I'd advise doing this before timing your tappet plate to increase your reset time um, because going too far on this and trimming your tail too much will definitely result in no feeding so um, timing your tappet plate is essential for consistency and FPS consistency in your grouping um, and avoiding that full auto compression droop, shooting 350 in semi and doing 300 in full auto. That is a classic sign that your tappet plate isn't timed correctly, which is why we're a firm believer in chrono is king. In all the builds that we do, we show it through a chrono, uh, in semi-automatic and, and full auto, basically showing that the timing of your tappet plate has been done correctly. Now, a telltale sign for a piston being out of timing is a very inconsistent feet per second um, you know, when you're say firing full auto, you might have feet, you might have 350 feet per second, you might have all the way down to like 270 and everything in between, and that's because it's being picked up and finished on different points of its release and firing. Um, another sound is your blaster should have like a sound to it. If your timing on your piston is out, it'll be more like a and you'll have like a rattle sort of sound to the gun. 
Um, and that is a tell another telltale sign that your piston is being slapped around and it will break very quickly if you do that. Even if your rack is epoxied in and everything's Loctited together, it will break very, very quickly. So um, I just wanted to give this information out to you guys that you know, shorter barrel rifles are better for higher rates of fire, longer barrel rifles are better for lower rates of fire, um, just bringing in that timing and stuff like that. So timing is really only necessary when you sort of start going over 30 rounds per second, or if you do 30 rounds per second and over, you might just want to be careful with your timing depending on what spring that you're running, especially if you're running a small spring. Um, you will have to be aware of your timing, so short stroking your sector, um, not so much on the tapper plate, it's more the tapper plate around that 35 rounds per second and higher, um, especially on things like DSGs where timing of the tapper plate is so minute and so pedantic to get it to shoot correctly. So um, I hope this video has helped you guys today. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Uh, we'll be sure to answer them. And if you want to see a video that we put together, um, feel free to ask. This is another how-to brought to you by CyberTrigger. We hope you guys have a lovely day, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.